Good morning, it's Dr. Toker, here for another little healthy tip. Some of you may not realize this, but before I was a doctor, I was a microbiologist. So I've always had an interest in microbiology, and to this day, I still engage in my little microbiology experiments, and then I make yogurt and beer and wine and those kind of things, because it's kind of fun to do. Um, however, I have a very keen interest in the gut biome, the microbiome. We're learning more and more about the microbiome. The reality is that your body requires a very diverse culture of bacteria within your intestinal tract. These bacteria not only protect you from foreign invasion, they also provide for you cofactors that your body needs to survive for chemical reactions, for your immunity, for absorption of nutrition. So your microbiome is extremely important. What is coming more to the forefront is the connection between your GI tract and your brain. So for a long time, we've been able to identify that some people have a very anxious gut, right? So when they're anxious, their stomachs get anxious, right? So, um, and interestingly, you can actually give some of those patients some anti-anxiety medicines and get rid of their IBS as a result, right? So there is, there's a known connection between the brain and the gut, and everyone just always assumed the person gets anxious, sends a little chemical down to your brain, to your GI tract, and that stimulates the GI tract and it causes IBS. As it turns out, uh, the reverse is potentially true that people with an abnormal GI tract microbiome are more prone to anxiety. And it's not the anxiety causing the IBS, it's the IBS causing the anxiety. It's kind of a reverse little flip going on there. What does that mean? And why is that happening? Like, why Why is everyone gone nuts all of a sudden? And, and honestly, not to beat a dead horse. I would never want to beat a dead horse. Um, but, um, speaking of dead horses, I'm looking out at my cows out there. They're looking so nice grazing in the grass. Now, which brings up a good point. That's grass fed beef. And that is how God intended us to get our food. Our food should be freely roaming about. Freely chewing off on grass on the ground. There is no fertilizer out there. There are no pesticides out there. Our cows do not take any antibiotics. They don't get any kind of weird substances. They don't do steroids. They don't. They don't do vaccines. So it's just it's just beef. It's just beef out there in in the yard. It's awesome, and that's kind of where we should be going with our farming. Unfortunately, we're not. We're going backwards. Everyone's making a profit. This is big farms. Huge farming industry is buying out smaller farms. So healthy food, like what comes off of my property, almost doesn't exist anymore because small farms are get are really very expensive to run. And these huge corporate conglomerates kind of have some political sway. And so it makes it very difficult for mom and pop farms to survive. And as we lose those farms, our food becomes more and more homogeneously grown and is also grown for profit, which means the land is being abused, the animals are being abused, and you are therefore getting food of almost no nutritious value. Why does that matter? Because the intestinal bacteria that you have gets their nutrition from what you consume. Right? So when you take an antibiotic randomly, because you forced your doctor to take an antibiotic, because you had the snivels and you're just convinced it must be a bacteria and, oh my God, I'm going to die. And patients do that all the time, by the way. Don't do that. Um, so the doctor complies, gives you an antibiotic. You've just knocked off all the normal GI tract bacteria in your system. And then maybe you don't like yogurt or the only yogurt you like is highly processed with no live culture in it, which exists, by the way. In fact, most yogurts are in that category um, these days. So you're not replacing the good bacteria in your GI tract with what you eat. Or worse yet, you're constantly insulting those poor little bacteria with chemicals like fake fats or fake sugars. The pesticides that are on your food 
the herbicides on your food, the fertilizers on your food, all of those things kill healthy bacteria. And so as you're constantly consuming these things, you're chronically destroying your GI tract. As a result, the GI tract cannot absorb foods properly and therefore you wind up eating more because you can't get full because you're not absorbing the right nutrients and you gain weight. It's one of the things that happens. The second thing that happens is the natural signals that are supposed to go between the GI tract and your brain get messed up. And that disruption can actually lead to Alzheimer's disease and chronic anxiety disorders and so forth and so on. Maybe the reason we have autism, we haven't really figured that out. But if you look through the literature of how certain diseases almost did not exist 100 years ago, but now they're extremely prevalent, and it's not just obesity, but a lot of things, you can trace all of that back to modern farming practices um, and honestly, the way we manufacture food in bulk. And so, one of the things that we are going to go on a mission, when I started my spa, this was the mission, was to sort of sound the alarm in my little corner of the world. And we're gonna to try to bring that corner of the world uh, throughout the state or even the country. But the reality is that uh, we are being poisoned. It's negatively impacting you and you don't even realize it. And so, Reality number one, be good to your GI tract bacteria. Stay away from artificial sugars, artificial fats. Take a real probiotic. The best are fermented foods of any kind. So if you're doing sourdough or yogurt or buttermilk or certain types of fermented cabbages or kabuka and all those kind of things. Those are all fermented foods that have good bacteria in them. They belong into your GI tract and they truly do help reset things. Avoid taking antibiotics just for giggles. You do not need an antibiotic every time you don't feel well. You're not dying, okay? Let a doctor tell you if you need an antibiotic. And if the doctor says this is just a virus, you don't need an antibiotic, then for God's sakes, do not take the antibiotic unless you need it. You want these antibiotics to work when you need them, and you do not want to destroy your body by taking them. Does that make sense? Okay, good. All right, anyway, so uh, this is also my call for everyone to enjoy pasture-raised animals, grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, free-range eggs. They are a little bit more expensive, but you do not have to eat as much to get the nutritive value of it. So there's actually more nutrition in one pasture raised egg than there is in a half dozen normal eggs. And that one egg costs a lot less than those six eggs. And there's certainly a lot less calories in that, right? You're overweight and overeating because your body is missing something. And all I'm suggesting is that you give the body what it wants and then it will give you what you want, which is your energy back, your waistline back, your hotness back. All right? Okay. The year of 2022, the year of hotness returns. Can't wait to see you again. If you like some of the content that we provide in our little health tips, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button and the little bell thing. I'm learning all about social media. You can friend us on Facebook and Instagram and leave reviews and all that would be so welcome. That way we can get our message to the world. Look forward to seeing you guys soon.